This episode is brought to you by Storyblocks. All right, we have made it all the way here to Airy headquarters here in Munich, Germany. We're gonna go really in depth and answer the one big question. Is it pronounced Airy or Ari? I don't know, but first of all, do we really have to wear these right now? I don't see anyone else wearing No, them. this is definitely the uniform. Got the socks and everything. This is called a Lederhosen. How do you Lederhosen? say it? Lederhosen? Yeah, yeah, I feel so good right now. Sebastian, Hi, Jean. what's up? Hey. Hi, Jean. Hey. Hey. Good to Where, see you. Yeah. I, I thought you said we were supposed to wear these to get into the, 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 the building. Oh, Don, I thought we were going to wear that tonight. Uh, t tonight? Oh, shoot. Sure. You brought the change of clothes, though. No, man, I don't have anything oh, else. No. You're telling me we're here at Airy headquarters and I'm going to be walking around like Japanese Pinocchio? Like, uh, well, shoot, what are we going to do? I'll put my costume on so we at least we'll, we'll look coherent here. Oh, okay? Sure. We must report for duty. <laughs> People should take care of their cameras and Absolutely. treat it well, but, yeah. but if not, not. <laughs> I see. So this is the if not test. If I break this camera, I'm not liable, right? Or was that in the, I didn't read the contract that you had me uh, sign this you morning. You signed it already. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Okay, 55,000, please. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do this with a real working camera and everything. Yes, not for every camera, you know, we do it once, <laughs> once in a while. Uh -huh. You know, because of course it gets a little damage here on the side. Yeah, so it scratches the paint. It scratches a bit. Yeah. Okay. This is one of the many tests. Oh, that, that sound. The sound is horrible. <laughs> it hurt me. It felt like punching a baby. <laughs> like you would think it's fun. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. Okay. He's saying I need to do it from the higher position. We need more pain. We need more pain. How much of a beating has this one taken? The first time. What? It's the first time for that camera. That was the first hit of the camera? Yeah, so it needs a second. I thought this was the camera that's already been beaten to death that you didn't care about anymore. That was a brand new one. We already sold it, so somebody will get it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case. Oh! I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I can't handle any more of this. Why are you laughing at this torture? The camera loves it. I think I might be traumatized. You're usually the one that does this test. Ah! Oh, this is what you come and do for fun? They're, they're laughing afterwards. It had made it crooked. Look, it, 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 this is a hundred mil, 150 mil bowl. And it's on tight too. Loosen it to the left, right? <laughs> It's actually on there good. See, the tighter that is, the harder it is to bend this. We have tested that with a running camera, uh -huh. where you see that the camera was filming itself in a mirror, and the camera continued recording. That's the job of the camera. It didn't drop any frames or anything like nothing, that. It just nothing. kept going. The drive worked well. The whole camera worked well. The lens stayed where it is and in a good shape. So we measured it, but it didn't have to be adjusted at all. Oh, so it didn't have to be reshimmed or no, anything nothing, like that? Nothing. Those cables are here, and somebody you know, could pull a cable or step on a cable and so which would pull the camera to that side. So uh -huh. it's more common that a camera is damaged on that side than on this one. Is this the one how you test your codex cards? That <laughs> I don't know what we do with that. Maybe the signature primes. <laughs> oh no. Now this trip to Germany actually happened last year and ever since it's been kind of sitting on a hard drive and I've been meaning to go back to edit it, but I wasn't quite sure how to piece it together or how I wanted to edit it. We just kind of went around and just shot and shot. and This just became so much footage that I've been kind of procrastinating editing this. But times like this is when using Storyblox is actually really useful. I just need a good way to just kind of tie everything together. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to just throw in some voiceover with some relevant B-roll. So I just went to Storyblox where they have over a million stock assets and I can just drop in this b-roll and you may have noticed that this is something I like to do even on videos that aren't sponsored by Storyblocks. It just kind of helps tell a part of the story that you need to without having to go back and do reshoots. And with my subscription I have access to all of this unlimited download so I could use as much or as little as I want for all my projects. On top of all this there's graphic templates, sound effects, and the music you're listening to right now. So if you want to give them a shot there's a QR code on the screen or hit that link down there in the description. Honestly they're one of the best values you can get considering all that you get with one account. So thanks again to Storybox for sponsoring this episode. Are you okay. laughing at the way I look? No, no, no. <laughs> I was tricked into this. Yeah, were you? I, ha I dress normally usually. Yeah. <laughs> you never actually wear this to work? No, we do uh, on occasion. So first of all, I'm going to show you the um, apprenticeship. Uh, so the only tools you're allowed to use is, is the, the hand file. So the first six months um, that you're actually in the apprenticeship here. Do your hands hurt after a while? Yeah. It does. Yeah. And then they come to here. And this yeah. is all hand yeah. You're looking for, in this case, no light through the cracks, basically. And then just to make it a little bit harder as well, it also has to have no light passing through if you turn it. Do you have your own that you made? At home, yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Is in, it in like a, in, a, in a glass, glass case? Yeah. How do you say that? A Grundlager. Grundlager. Is that good? 
you know? So titanium stronger and less affected by heat. More expensive than yeah, aluminum. More expensive. These three pieces are probably about 250 euro. 250 euro? US. Oh. Just raw material, yeah. I haven't done anything to it yet. Kind of starts here, makes its way to here and a bunch of stuff happens and then it's here. It sounds like every step of the way there's a ton of quality control. For sure. We shake them for 20 minutes on each axis just to make sure that all the screws are tight and that all the screws have the right amount of glue. Ah, so this is testing for TSA, the luggage loaders on the plane. Yeah. We also have them in these climate chambers and we'll take them all the way down to negative 20 degrees, run them in max performance, make sure they still work and then we'll take them up uh, in, in multiple stages right up to 45 degrees and run them at max performance as well. I have this little incubator at home, but this is like a legit version of that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, there's a lot of stuff moving here. Yeah. So this goes to what, the storage room or something and picks up yep. all the parts you need? All the little parts as well as the um, completed cameras as well. Ooh. So if I scan this. Yep. And then unfoiran, which means deliver it to me, please. Unfoiran. Dun. Pull it out. Hey, what's that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please don't release the German Shepherds. <laughs> we need one of this at our house. Oh yeah. Oh my God, and it has tiny little airy lights. Look at that. I think it's like, is it weight sensitive? Yeah. You need to drink it down in under one minute if you want to work here. Oh. Now as cool as it was to see the behind the scenes of how they put all the cameras together, the real reason why I traveled across the world is to get to work. Hey, Gene. Hey. You finally made it. What yes. happened? Oh, my limo broke down on the way here. Can you no way. That? Should I give me a call? I'll pick you up. Oh, really? You have a car here? Yeah, that's oh. my ride. It actually really matches your outfit. We randomly just found it in the parking lot. We just thought it looked really cool. We actually don't even know whose car that is. <laughs> We're here at Airy Rental right now, and we are going to start pre-production for my masterpiece. Time to make a movie. I like this bell, it's pretty sick. Hello, Dylan is my translator. Herr Kartoffeln, er ist ein sehr berühmtes uh, YouTuber. Alle Menschen in ganze Welt weiß er, die Menschen, die Frauen, die Gemüse, die Hunde, die Katze. Und wir kommen hier zu einer Film gemacht, die <laughs> I'm pretty Film sure it doesn't take that long to yeah. say. Hello, so, pleased to meet you, yes. We'll use you later, yeah. you can go. Do you know what you want to shoot about and you have any ideas? I would like to shoot on a red camera. camera. Even my Alexa 65 we have, so whatever. You have an Alexa 65 yes, here? Okay, course. I actually didn't know you guys had that here. Can I see it? Can I touch it? Yes, never, of course, right? you can come in. Yeah. Yeah, 65? Oh 65. Right. Can I touch it? Yes, yeah, you can touch it, of course. You're a professional, I got... they, they told me so. Oh, <laughs> somebody is lying to you. There's not too many of these around. No, not really, yeah. Very large format. It's very large format, you, you <laughs> could say. I mean, the cool thing is that people who work with other Ari cameras before usually don't have a hard time adapting to it. I would like to shoot my masterpiece on it, but I just found out that we had a few budget cuts because the producers, you know how they are. But the interface looks exactly the same. So if you're used to shooting on any area, you yeah, this the is the same <laughs> area raw, 6.5. Yeah, this point. is the, the full open gate. Yeah. They don't want a camera which is harder to use. Airy Rentals customizes a lot of lenses, right? Because I've heard about like the DNA lenses and things like Signature that. Signature yeah. primes. If someone comes in and they say, I really like the master anamorphics, but I want to shoot on um, the LF, you can go in and adjust the sharpness and, and, and essentially tune it exactly for whatever the cinematographer wants. Yeah, right, exactly. Oh. Because every DP, you know that, it wants some individuality yeah. inside. If you have the right lens technician, they can fiddle around and do it for you. You guys are actually prepping for a shoot right That's now? That's correct, yes. Ah, well, can you yeah. talk about what it is or is it Unfortunately, secret? due to an NDA we signed, I can't tell you the exact show we're prepping, but it's an international feature film. We just did in the morning the VFX lens grids because we have a lot of visual effects and what you actually do is actually shoot the distortion grids. If you have a lot of visual effects shots and anamorphic lenses usually have like a distortion. Then the VFX department, they analyze it in a special software so they can actually see the distortion of the lenses. So we're prepping here since last week on Monday. We have like one and a half one weeks of prep, eight prep days. Probably you used to be an intern here from the several oh, yeah, yeah. years Correct. ago. Ten years ago, he yeah, started almost and ten years. Uh, getting more and more to business and now he's the first AC of a big show. So we wow. are very proud of him. Yeah, yeah. very cool. All yeah. thanks to Eri. Thank you. Yeah, no. If uh, you show up without a memory card or something, then you'd be in a lot of trouble. Then we would be in a lot of trouble. Luckily, it never happened to us. You seem like you have it together. If I was in first AC, then yeah. we'd probably <laughs> show up and half of the lenses would be missing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on this show, we carry three cameras with us, mm -hmm. three Alexa Mini LFs. It's a large format show. Good luck on the show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Are you excited? I'm very excited, yeah. yeah. Three days to go and then we start shooting. If you're looking at a small screen 
and it's like, I like how it looks, but then you blow it up onto a projector, exactly. then it looks a little different. This will really help see what we're talking about downstairs when we're yes, trying to yeah. figure out the lens. And then if you're not happy, you go down to our lens uh, technician, they, oh, I would like to have it more sharp on the right. Yeah, it's sort of a closed loop because the lens technician could sit next to you and write down what you want to have changed. So this gives both the possibility to have a really uh, fast turnaround. You custom tune the lenses, shoot your test, look at the test much faster to your perfect idea or to the perfect lens for your shoot. It actually is great because there's so much more confidence when yeah, you can just see yeah, it right that's here. A, that's the most important into, part yeah. for, for the DPs. This is now a loading situation. They're loading for Big Show. Is this for the same project? That is it all for the same project? project? They're doing the testing also like in the, the camera department. As you can see, they check everything that they have here from the first screw until the last lamp. I love how the, the giant lights look pretty much exactly like the small ones, but just scaled up, like a photo of it on the internet. It you go, like hmm, I, I could pick up like a couple of those and you show up in your sedan. People say cameras can get heavy, but... No, <laughs> You're required to have some tattoos to work in this department, right? <laughs> I don't know, we both don't have any. Oh, no. We don't have any. Usually the grip guys are with a tattoo. This is a two? They're 2K, 2K blondes. I used to have one of these and it was like, this is my big light. Do you want to see a 360? I've always wanted to know how you get this onto the stand. Oh, <laughs> you just lift it, try. It's really not that heavy. Really? Yeah, you can like lift it one oh hand. Oh my God. With yeah. you? Oh, that's not so bad. How much power does this use? 1,500, the max. You can just plug this into your house <laughs> and power this whole thing. But you have to make sure that you're not running the laundry machine at the same yeah. circuit. <laughs> yeah. and don't cook water at the same yeah. time. Right? Oh. That takes oh, with the life. electric one? Americans don't fun. use plastic cookers. You never see them. It's always a coffee machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Americans, it's always a coffee <laughs> yeah. machine. This little small cube here could basically light up this lamp. For about six to eight hours. That does? Yeah. About it's six about to eight it. hours, which wow. is a pretty impressive thing that we offer our customers. Yo, you can't have a good shot without good lighting. That's why all DOPs come from lighting. You want to grab it? <laughs> Holy crap. That's what we do all day long, you know? That's what we do all day long. You have a, a super techno here. Terry, this is what I want for the house. I want. We have them in all different sizes, obviously. Basically, the, the Maxima gimbal in here. And then just push. I'm not doing okay. anything. It's all yours. Oh, OK. So that's it. One person can push this, actually. Yeah. Ah. Even not when you're not using the telescopic feature or the jib movements, I've seen them just bring this on. And they literally just use this instead of a tripod, because well, it's like, yeah, yeah. oh, reposition this big old camera here. Exactly. It's like, OK, yeah, yeah, five exactly. seconds. Exactly. You can position it and do movements at the same time, whatever you need. Different sizes, for example the 23 footer from Scorpio, one of these interior telescopic cranes. So this one would be able to fit through a standard doorway? Yeah, yeah. The grip crew of the of the next show, their first loading day today. Does any broken equipment ever come back and you're just like, how did this get broken? Yes. <laughs> just like a huge steel beam just yeah. bent. All right, so we ran into a problem. I want to film a scene right there next to that building, but apparently film permits here are really expensive for that building. But if you get a film permit for right over here, it's like a quarter of the price. Yeah. So you might think that this is the expensive lens to rent, but it's still less than a film permit. So <laughs> little hack for you guys out there. Can you tell us about this lens? It's a huge lens. Yeah. <laughs> One of the only lenses I know which has 1000 millimeter. We got our focus here and aperture control right here from this high five. And let's see the zoom here. Whoa, Whoa it's okay. huge. Signal as well as control and everything here. So you see them all the way over there? So we're still having three out of four bars. Okay, this is gonna work guys. This is like one of the most important action sequences in our film. It's yeah. gonna be where Dylan and I fight each other. Oh. <laughs> I guess there is no take two and for you. Kai. Uh, you had some people thinking they almost caught the, uh, called the police here, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we should get out of here quickly. Yeah. What do you think of our performance there? I think you nailed it. <laughs> You're natural. Like, this place is actually publicly full of people. And the camera is so far away that no one has any idea. What did you do? What do you guys think? You were very dirty. <laughs> oh, can I see playback on that? <laughs> <laughs> These kids just walking past like, what the hell? 
I'm just a lady over here, like, do you see all the dust coming off? Oh my gosh, yes. Then you're just over there smiling, like. We got the scene, guys. We did it. We are here actually at Schlossgarten Schönbrunn. It's, it's a beautiful place in the, in the heart of Vienna. With us are Alois. He's a local first AC and he was also a better test of the high five, so he knows the system very well. I see that there's a lot of ACs that are glued to the monitor, so mm -hmm. they're just mm -hmm. tied in there. And I also yeah. heard of ACs that only look at the subject directly. So where do you sit in that? Everyone uh, who is asking me what's the right way to pull focus, I always tell them there is no right and no wrong way to pull focus. If it's sharp, then it's the right way. I do it that for about 10 years now. Oh, okay. And I started with 35 millimeters, so I'm used to measure focus by my eye. But then after a while, it was more like into using the monitor. And these are SDI cables, so they come out of here. Yeah. And wow, I'm just not used to seeing that. Hello. Nice horse. Hyros 4 we have here. Oh wait, is that how you say it? Hyros? Hyros, yes. I think yeah. I kept calling it Hiroshi. Oh really? <laughs> oh, okay. oh my god, how many times have I went to a rental house and been like, can I get a 4-pin Hiroshi? Sounds a little bit Asian, man. Says, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> They're like, man, you're so Asian. But maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. The funny thing is the German say Hirose. Hirose? So, Hirose. Oh my god, I used to say vignetting, you know, vignetting mm -hmm. in the lens. Yeah, I used yeah. to say Vignetti. <laughs> Oh, it's, but, but it's actually called Vignentieren in German. Really? Yeah, so oh. it's not that far away from there. Great, actual, now I feel yeah. like an idiot twice. <laughs> <laughs> so from there we went to the next location in the beautiful countryside, and that's when I realized there was a slight mix-up. When Ari asked me to go there to work, they didn't mean make a movie, they had something else for me. What happens if you uh, crash into this and... It's not possible. Hit the pillar. It, ju it just said dead man. That doesn't yeah. sound like the thing I want to see no, right before that, we... No, because uh, they're on the left and the right side standing something stuff. Ah. And, uh, there's oh, a so we're the dead men? Yeah. Uh, dead man though. Yeah, because Why I... don't they call it safe man? Now we have to go up. Whoa, we're going up. Okay. Yeah. Now if you can drive to it by yourself. Oh, you feel very powerful in here, huh? Yeah, I feel like a, a king. It's like comfortable. Bring me some breakfast. <laughs> you can go very high. Oh my god, this is so close to everything. Have you seen that YouTube video where a forklift crashes into one of these and then they all fall like dominoes? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. So, is that <laughs> why it says that's dead why man dead on man. the screen right here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are we going? Let's keep going. Oh, are you go to the next level too? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dylan, do you trust me with your life right now? Can we still move forward? Yeah. We can? Yeah. <gasps> and you can you can move it. How fast did I hit this go? Max speed. All right. Autobahn time. Well, okay, that's scary. Yeah. How do you feel, Dylan? No, I was just thinking if anything happens, I'm just going to have to like grab <laughs> onto this. And just <laughs> with the fork in this pallet. Is there sensors on the fork? No. There's no, no sensors on the there's fork? There's no sensor on. Okay, so this is where I can really mess up. You told me that it was impossible uh. to make a mistake. Oh! Uh. Oh, okay. That was fast. That was fast. If we were to go forward and then as fast as possible and then stop, it, will it this stops. fall over? No, yeah. Uh, it will. Well, well, you want to try it oh. again? <laughs> no, that's, we're fine. Can we get down? Oh my God. We will do this for 30 times to guarantee What the did that light ever quality. do to you? Did it bully you as a child or? <laughs> <laughs> Just according to the standard for, uh, okay. for the professional ah, luminaires. It's no. my job to, okay, to damage the product. Okay, I a little angry or something. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> This pin, if this fails, the second suspension protects it uh, from falling down. Nothing f falls to the ground. Shouldn't break either and should work at it as it's supposed to be afterwards. Oh my gosh, you make me throw a hammer into a camera and now this. In the cellar, in the basement, we have some freezers. So we are also testing the fixtures under very low, low uh, temperatures. I'm just sorry, I was just distracted by your beautiful beard. It still look good? It looks good, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do we have the time? So otherwise, I would... no. Yeah. Okay. That's, hmm. uh, I like to be precise and clean, like like we like our fixtures, you know. <laughs> so we're always we're always precise. So. Open door. Oh, that's a cool door. A little bit like Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. yeah. Oh, look at this. That's right. I got a PhD in doctoring. I see the LED floor is the biggest portion of the manufacturing now. Oh my God! Look at all these three sixties. Is this like the uh, gift bag? Everyone yeah. on the way out yeah, gets yeah, to just pick up one. Yeah. This is a gaffer's dream right here. So if you've ever shot on an airy light, then. It was here, this is his home. Yeah, it has definitely left this facility. The lighting production started in, uh -huh. uh, in Munich, but then we got World War II and then they needed to move the premises and everything and then they, they found this premises here. Oh, I see all the different colors in there. Orbiter emitters? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a six color engine. This spectral power distribution gives you a more natural light. If you want to grade, color grade afterwards or having information in each color, 
makes a big difference. Different ways to measure accuracy of lights. Is there something that you guys look at to try to make sure that the lights are very well even? TLCI is of course a, a very important one for us. We also test for, for regular CRI with the eight samples, so the extended CRI, CQS, TM3015. Doesn't matter what type of light measurement you are using, at the end, an hour fixture has to perform the best way in, with all these different measurements. This is 18,000 watt pure HMI discharge lamp light power. If you hold a cigarette or a piece of paper uh, in front of the fixture, you could light it. Whenever you turn on a light, you're supposed to yell striking. Is this why people say that? Someone was just like doing something and then they just turned it on. This is a UV glass and we have that for all um, HMI fixtures to lower at least the UV radiation. There's a safety switch inside. So if, if I do this, then it will switch off immedi ah. imme immediately. It's kind of like the thing where you attach the key to the jet ski on your thing. Yeah. So if you fly exactly. off, yeah. then it'll shut off. Yeah. We have uh -huh. the RE Photometrics app. If we're looking for Orbiter, and go into a model and you see all the data. You see the illuminance at that distance. We will see the beam diameter mm -hmm. and you can adjust it to your own needs. So look at the RE Photometrics app is always worthwhile. And there's still tungstens being made here. Yeah. One of the things I really like about the Orbiter is it's this new tool that's fancy, it's got all these features in it, but you still can say, oh, I know how to light with a 2K and gels. Yeah. So you can say, okay, make it look like a 2K tungsten with these gels, or make it look like an HMI with these gels. How we see it, we manufacturers need to adapt to the language the jargon of the industry into the film industry into the methodologies in the film industry. You are now at the dentist office for lenses. So let's say I was flying a signature prime on a drone and accidentally crashed. I never crashed drones though, but if I did, what would be the first thing you would do with it? Something happened to the lens during your drone crash. Ah, okay. <laughs> so what are you looking at here? You see this circle. And if you yeah. go out of focus, you can see that it's not symmetric to have a smear in one direction. So something has happened to the lens. Maybe it's bent. Would you say this is fairly minor issues or? No, it was out of specification. No. And here you also can see the numbers. This is the contrast. It should be above 80 or 90%. So here you have 50% contrast. The lines, white and black, are blurring. Can you have good resolution with low contrast? Uh, it's possible. It, you can have a very high resolution and a very low contrast. Uh, that's uh, very often with older lenses uh, mm -hmm. because of stray light. Uh, the coatings on older lenses, they were not as good. Or you can have also low contrast uh, on lenses you are using for image processing and uh, so a machine is pro processing the image, so we don't need a high contrast. But that's a different application. But in cinema, we need high resolution and also high contrast. I see. Is it possible to have high contrast but low resolution? It is possible. And uh, this is a little bit, how should I say, on cheaper lenses. And uh, the human eye sees contrast as sharpness. So if you have a lens with a high contrast, and low resolution, maybe it's a very cheap lens. It's, it gives you the impression, oh, it's very good. But if you zoom in, uh, in, in Photoshop, you see, oh, I don't have resolution. I don't see the details. But first of all, I thought uh, it's a good lens, but uh, it has no details. If you have too much contrast, uh, especially on a portrait lens, and you see with high contrast every wrinkle in the face, maybe you're saying, oh, that's too much contrast. I like the resolution and the contrast not that much then I'm using a soft filter for portrait. Right. But you are starting okay. with a very good lens and then you find a way to adapt the lens to your applications. Now we are in a clean room, which is controlled. And this is a clean bench, which is just a higher level of a clean room. This would be a good place to be when you have allergies. Oh yeah, it's the best place, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come here in the screen and hang out. Sensor is the most important part of the camera. Of course. Important not to have a finger smudge on yes. there when the that client gets... Happens. This is how we get the mini LF sensors. One of these wafers about 10,000 euro or 12,000 euro. What so if you? you have this whole thing together, it's about 25 of these little slices is one wow. lot. So that's what turns into a LF sensor. Yes, there are some who are defective. Basically what, the, what this machine does, it's really pre-measuring so that we know which one we really can build and which one just doesn't work. And I see, so yeah. you check every sensor before you throw it in the camera for it's basically accuracy. Basically, like if you bake a cake, it's hard to make it always the same. We just 
only take the best ones, yeah. There's so much more that we got to do and people we got to meet, but I really appreciate everybody's time to share their knowledge with me, like Florian, who is part of Area Academy. There you can go and learn everything you need to know about the camera to be proficient with Aerie stuff. And then this is Mark, who basically knows everything there is to know about the new Aerie Alexa 35. I had to find out where he lives. I kicked down his door and forced him to explain a bunch of stuff to me for hours and hours. So Mark, I really appreciate you explaining all this to me and teaching me some very valuable skills. Whoa, I need to learn how to do that. Will Eri ever put out a budget camera so I can start vlogging on an Alexa mini? <laughs> mini? You know what, we, we talk about that often, but we're really, really good at making really cool high-end cameras. I'm not sure we're good at making something less expensive. You can't just take this technology and put it in like a GoPro capsule no. so I could put it on my helmet when I go no. snowboarding. No, see, the, the thing is, this little puppy here, the actual electronic board, that's 20 watts already. There's no free lunch. So if you want the best image, it's going to cost you some wattage, some size, some weight. And that's what we're really, really good at doing. Most important question, how do you pronounce the brand? Well, I, 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 my rule is I always mispronounce things like the natives do. So in Germany, it's Ari. Mm -hmm. because it's Arnold und Richter Cinetechnik, that's the official name of the company. Okay. Ari, and in America I would call it Ari. Now what we just need is a very long walk off into the sunset shot, but I need it to be really, really long. Let's do it. Oh my God, the back of my shirt is very dirty. I think the sunset's actually the other way. We're walking away from oh, it right shoot. now. Oh uh, shoot. But I don't, well, we already started We've though. already committed. Yeah, we've we gone can. too far. Yeah, I mean look, if I much. zoom out the shot, I'm all the way out here. If we get back to the hotel, if we just keep walking forward. Wait, what time is it? Oh, like, it's a horse. Oh my God. This horse is ruining the shot. How dare you? You know that we make sausages out of horses in Vienna? What? Really? Yeah. Whoa. Wait, how far out are we? Oh, okay. Okay, this lens is pretty insane. Okay, so if you look at the shot, the guys that look like they're right here basically, they're actually pretty far behind me. Yeah, they look like they're right behind us. Right, actually. but then we look back. And... Anyways, how much longer until the sun sets? Didn't we schedule this? For like I think we still got like three hours left. Oh, the sunset today is at 9.30 p.m. 9.30 ah. p.m.? So why do we have such good range on this wireless high five? So we actually, we attached the 2.4 gigahertz frequency hopping module. Yeah. And this should give us range literally until the sunset. There. Oh no, we lost it. Right at the, we right lost a good it. time to lose it. Have full camera control though. I can run, stop it. Hold on, let's see if I can get it. No link. We're officially lost on our video transmission, but the high five has no problem. So if it says two to three bars, we're good. So generally speaking, the focus unit will outperform any video transmitter. Absolutely. I would like to try this with the uh, DJI transmitter and see how that one does, because that does give us some pretty crazy You know range, what? But... We, we do this in the US with the 900 megahertz oh. and the DJI transmitter. Next shot we do, we plan it. I'll get permits in Mexico and we'll shoot it in the US. Now, we have to walk all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Let's but do it. Look at this though. Horses walking around We're not allowed to film this. Oh, we're not allowed to this film is this? beyond our budget. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> we'll film that though. Okay. But it's also beyond our budget. <laughs> okay. Honestly, I think this movie is going to be great. Yeah. And I think the only problem with it is that we don't set it up for a sequel. We have to so that the audience wants more and we can make a lot more money. A cliffhanger okay. for a second. Like this is too nice of an ending. Say something mean to me quickly. Your hair looks stupid. What do you mean? Looks like a dumb face. Come here, you son of a- <laughs>